portal to the world of demons is opened, and as is tradition, it falls to the latest in a long line of heroes to fight back the demons and seal the portal for another age. But the Belmonts being unavailable, we have a different whip-wielding heroine to solve the problem. Crypt Stalker is actually two games in one. It has a console mode done in the style of Castlevania, and a handheld mode with different levels done in the style of Castlevania The Adventure. There are a total of 13 levels between the two modes, each of which has its own gimmicks to keep things fresh. All in all, Crypt Stalker packs in a lot of content for its low price, and is recommended for anyone who values retro authenticity. The story to Super Cyborg is a familiar one. A scientific installation is being consumed by an awakening alien menace, and it's up to you to put a stop to it. You'll fight your way through seven levels that begin fairly ordinary, but quickly turn into science fiction bio-horror as you fight your way through the alien's biomechanical eyeball-ridden innards. And speaking of guts, the heart of this game is obviously Contra, with few twists such as an alt-fire mode that lets the player charge up any weapon. It's recommended for run-and-gun fans who don't mind a challenge, because, believe me, this game will get hard. Let's clear up a little confusion up front, as Minor Key has both Gunmetal Arcadia and Gunmetal Arcadia Zero available. Both games use the same basic assets, both are heavily inspired by Zelda 2. However, while Zero is a traditional linear platformer, this game has roguelike elements. Not only are the levels, layouts, and bosses randomized for each run, but the game remembers your achievements via the legacy system. Depending on how your last run turned out, you might start with some power-ups, see a different map layout, or even face a different final boss. With a crew of unlockable characters and multiple endings, there's plenty to see here. 